Biblical inspiration is the doctrine in Christian theology that the authors and editors of the Bible were led or influenced by God with the result that their writings may be designated in some sense the Word of God. Etymology <inaudible> 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 The word inspiration comes by way of Vulgate Latin and the King James English translations of the Greek word theopneustos, theopneustos literally, God breathed, found in 2 Timothy 3.16-3.17. Pasa graf theopneustos chi ophilimos pros didiscalion pros elegmen pros epanorthosin pros pidaean ten en dikaiosinae hina artios a ho tu theo anthropos pros pan ergon agathon exertizamentos omnis scriptura divinitus inspirata utilis est ad docendum, ad arguendum, ad corripiendum, et eridiendum in justitia, ut perfectus sit homo dei, ad omne opus bonum instructus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. When Jerome translated the Greek text of the Bible into the language of the common people of Latium, the region of central western Italy in which the city of Rome is located, he translated the Greek theopneustos as divinitus inspirata, divinely breathed into. The word inspiration comes from the Latin noun inspiratio and from the verb inspirare. Inspirare is a compound term resulting from the Latin prefix in inside, into, and the verb spirare to breathe. Inspirare meant originally to blow into, as for example in the sentence of the Roman poet Ovid, conchi sonanti inspirare iubet. He orders to blow into the resonant shell. In classic Roman times, inspirare had already come to mean to breathe deeply and assumed also the figurative sense of to instill something in the heart or in the mind of someone. In Christian theology, the Latin word inspirare was already used by some church fathers in the first centuries to translate the Greek term to o. The church fathers often referred to writings other than the documents that formed or would form the biblical canon as inspired. Some modern English translations opt for God breathed, niv or breathed out by God. ESV and avoid inspiration altogether, since its connotation, unlike its Latin root, leans toward breathing in instead of breathing out. Basis The Bible contains many passages in which the authors claim divine inspiration for their message or report the effects of such inspiration on others. Besides the direct accounts of written revelation, such as Moses receiving the Ten Commandments, the prophets of the Old Testament frequently claimed that their message was of divine origin by prefacing the revelation using the following phrase, Thus says the Lord. For example, 1 Kg's 12 22-24, 1 Chr 17-3-4, Jer 35-13, Ezek 2-4, Zech 7-9, etc. The second epistle of Peter claims that no prophecy of Scripture was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit." 2 Pet 120-21. The second epistle of Peter also implies that Paul's writings are inspired 2 Pet Many Christians cite a verse in Paul's letter to Timothy, 2 Timothy 3 verses 16-17 as evidence that all scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable." Here St. Paul is referring to the Old Testament, since the scriptures have been known by Timothy from "...infancy." Verse 15. Others offer an alternative reading for the passage, for example, theologian C. H. Dodd suggests that it "...is probably to be rendered," as "...every inspired scripture is also useful." A similar translation appears in the New English Bible, in the Revised English Bible, and as a footnoted alternative in the New Revised Standard Version. The Latin Vulgate can be so read. Yet others defend the traditional interpretation. Daniel B. Wallace calls the alternative probably not the best translation. Topic: <laughs> Views. Topic: a 2011 Gallup survey reports, 
A 49% plurality of Americans say the Bible is the inspired Word of God but that it should not be taken literally, consistently the most common view in Gallup's nearly 40-year history of this question." Theories seeing only parts of the Bible as inspired, partial inspiration, meet with insistent emphasis on plenary inspiration on the part of its proponents. Roman Catholic. Topic. The Roman Catholic Church holds the Bible as inspired by God, but does not view God as the direct author of the Bible, in the sense that he does not put a ready-made book in the mind of the inspired person. Pope Benedict XVI gave the following non-dogmatic explanation in 2007. The scripture emerged from within the heart of a living subject, the pilgrim people of God, and lives within this same subject. T he individual author or group of authors are not autonomous they form part of the people of God the deeper author of the scriptures L likewise this people knows that it is led and spoken to by God himself who through men and their humanity is at the deepest level the one speaking as summarized by Carl Keating, the Roman Catholic apologetic for the inspiration of Scripture first considers the Scriptures as a merely historical source, and then it attempts to derive the divinity of Jesus from the information contained therein, illuminated by the tradition of the Catholic Church and by what they consider to be common knowledge about human nature. After offering evidence that Jesus is indeed God, they argue that his biblical promise to establish a church that will never perish cannot be empty, and that promise, they believe, implies an infallible teaching authority vested in the church. This teaching authority is able, in turn, to establish the canon of the scriptures, namely, those books which are to be accepted by believers as inspired. Topic. Protestant. According to Frederick Farrar, Martin Luther did not understand inspiration to mean that the scriptures were dictated in a purely mechanical manner. Instead, Luther held that they were not dictated by the Holy Spirit, but that his illumination produced in the minds of their writers the knowledge of salvation, so that divine truth had been expressed in human form, and the knowledge of God had become a personal possession of man. The actual writing was a human, not a supernatural act. John Calvin also rejected the verbal dictation theory, although Luther did not believe God physically penned the Bible, he asserted that, he the pious Christian should not doubt that however simple they the scriptures may seem, these are the very words, deeds, judgments, and history of the high majesty and wisdom of God. The doctrine of sola scriptura was one of the central teachings during the Protestant Reformation. It teaches that the Bible is the final authority for moral, spiritual, and for some, civil matters. As Luther said, the true rule is this, God's word shall establish articles of faith, and no one else, not even an angel can do so. <inaudible> Evangelical <inaudible> Evangelicals view the Bible as a genuinely human product, but one superintended by the Holy Spirit, preserving the author's works from error without eliminating their specific concerns, situation, or style. This divine involvement, they say, allowed the biblical writers to communicate without corrupting God's own message both to the immediate recipients of the writings and to those who would come after. Some evangelicals have labeled the conservative or traditional view as verbal, plenary inspiration of the original manuscripts by which they mean that each word not just the overarching ideas or concepts was meaningfully chosen under the superintendence of God. Evangelicals acknowledge the existence of textual variations between biblical accounts of apparently identical events and speeches. They see these as complementary, not contradictory, and explain them as the differing viewpoints of different authors. For instance, the Gospel of Matthew was intended to communicate the Gospel to Jews, the Gospel of Luke to Greeks, and the Gospel of Mark to Romans. Evangelical apologists such as John W. Haley in his book, Alleged Discrepancies in the Bible, and Norman Geisler in When Critics Ask, have proposed answers to hundreds of claimed contradictions. 
Some discrepancies are accounted for by changes from the autographa the original manuscripts that have been introduced in the copying process, either deliberately or accidentally. Many evangelicals consider biblical inerrancy and or biblical infallibility to be the necessary consequence of the Bible's doctrine of inspiration see, for example, the Westminster Confession of Faith or the Chicago Statement on Biblical Inerrancy. Three basic approaches to inspiration are often described when the evangelical approach to scripture is discussed. Verbal dictation theory. The dictation theory claims that God dictated the books of the Bible word by word, suggesting the authors were no more than tools used to communicate God's precisely intended message. Verbal plenary inspiration. This view gives a greater role to the human writers of the Bible while maintaining a belief that God preserved the integrity of the words of the Bible. The effect of inspiration was to move the authors so as to produce the words God wanted. In this view the human writers' individual backgrounds, personal traits, and literary styles were authentically theirs, but had been providentially prepared by God for use as his instrument in producing scripture. Intuition theory, the authors of the scriptures were merely wise men, so the Bible is inspired by advanced human insight. Partial inspiration, the Bible is infallible in matters of faith and practice, morals, yet it could have errors in history or science e.g. the Big Bang could be true, and the Genesis creation account is more allegorical than historical. Dynamic inspiration, the thoughts contained in the Bible are inspired, but the words used were left to the individual writers. This suggests the underlying message of the scriptures are inspired, while the exact wording is dynamic, as Lutherans confess in the Nicene Creed, the Holy Spirit spoke through the prophets. The Apology of the Augsburg Confession identifies Holy Scripture with the Word of God and calls the Holy Spirit the author of the Bible. Topic. Criticism Topic. At times, the verbal plenary inspiration theory has been criticized as tending toward a dictation theory of inspiration, where God speaks and a human records his words. C. H. Dodd wrote, the theory which is commonly described as that of verbal inspiration is fairly precise. It maintains that the entire corpus of scripture consists of writings every word of which, presumably in the original autographs, forever inaccessible to us, was directly dictated by the deity. They consequently convey absolute truth with no trace of error or relativity. No attempt will be made here to formulate an alternative definition of inspiration that I believe to be a false method. There is indeed no question about the original implications of the term, for primitive religious thought the inspired person was under the control of a supernatural influence which inhibited the use of his normal faculties. In the New American Commentary by T.D. Lee and H.P. Griffin, it was written, N.O. respected evangelicals maintain that God dictated the words of Scripture. The evangelical position has been criticized as being circular by non-Christians and as well as Christians such as Catholic and Orthodox authors, who accept the doctrine of biblical inspiration but reject the Protestant arguments in favor of it. These critics claim that the Bible can only be used to prove doctrines of biblical inspiration if the doctrine is assumed to begin with. Some defenders of the evangelical doctrine such as B. B. Warfield and Charles Hodge, however, moved away from such circular arguments and committed themselves to the legitimacy of external verification to inductively prove the doctrine, though they placed some restrictions on the evidences that could be considered. Others such as Cornelius Van Til, Gordon Clark, and John Frame have accepted circularity as inevitable in the ultimate presuppositions of any system and seek instead to prove the validity of their position by transcendental arguments related to consistency. Topic Modernist Christianity Topic The typical view within liberal Christianity and progressive Christianity rejects the idea that the Bible is divinely inspired in a unique way. Some advocates of higher criticism who espouse this view even go so far as to regard the Bible as purely a product of human invention. However, most form critics, such as Rudolf Bultmann (1884–1976) and Walter Brueggemann (1933), still regard the Bible as a sacred text, just not a text that communicates the unaltered Word of God. They see it instead as true, divinely inspired theology mixed with foreign elements that can sometimes be inconsistent with the overarching messages found in Scripture and that have discernible roots in history, mythology, or ancient cultural, cultic practices. 
As such, form critics attempt to separate the kernel of inspired truth from the husk that contains it, doing so through various exegetical methods. Topic Neo -orthodox topic the Neo-Orthodox doctrine of inspiration views the Bible as the words of God, but not the Word of God. It is only when one reads the text that it becomes the Word of God to the reader. This view is a reaction to the modernist doctrine, which, neo-Orthodox proponents argue, eroded the value and significance of the Christian faith, and simultaneously a rejection of the idea of textual inerrancy. Karl Barth (1886–1968) and Emil Brunner (1889–1966) were primary advocates of this approach. Topic see also topic John Calvin's view of Scripture, general revelation, progressive revelation, Christianity, thought, inspiration, verbum domini, apostolic exhortation of the Pope Benedict XVI. Topic references topic topic bibliography topic Warfield, B. B. 1977 reprint. Inspiration and Authority of Bible, with a lengthy introductory essay by Cornelius Van Til. ISBN 0-8010-9586-7. Sproul, R. C. Hath God Said? Video Series. Geisler, Norman, ed. 1980. Inerrancy. ISBN 0-310-39281-0. C. H. Dodd The Authority of the Bible. Topic further reading topic Schaefer, Louis Sperry 1993 1947 Inspiration Systematic Theology Grand Rapids Kregel pp 61 to 88 ISBN 9780825423406 Topic external links topic The Authority and Inspiration of the Scriptures by B B Warfield God Inspired Scripture by B B Warfield The Inspiration of Scripture by Lorraine Boatner The Divine Inspiration of the Bible by Arthur Pink The Protestant Rule of Faith Chapter 6 of the Introduction from Charles Hodge's Systematic Theology which argues for the traditional doctrine over and against the modernist doctrine Bibliography for and online articles about inspiration Scholarly articles on biblical inspiration from the Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary Library Catholic Encyclopedia, Modernism 10 Reasons Why I Believe the Bible is the Word of God by R.A. Torrey